Hello, hello to all of you beautiful people out there. I want to start my show by sending peace and love to everyone that's watching and listening to me. Thank you guys for tuning in. Welcome to my show, QC. My name is Queen Joe. I am your host. Some of you guys may already know me. If you don't already know me, please do follow me on Instagram at d 2 e d queen dot joe. I am so excited, guys. I'm so excited to bring you guys the first episode of my show, okay? <laughs> like, if you met me within at any point within the past three to five years, I've told you that I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to start a podcast. <laughs> I'm finally doing it, y'all. I'm starting the podcast, and I cannot wait to show you guys all of my cra- crazy, crazy ideas, okay? But we're going to take things slow this first episode. I'm just going to take you guys on a little life journey to tell you guys how I came up with the name of the show, the slogan of the show, tell you guys who I am, where I came from, how I got here, how I got into podcasting. And then I'm going to end this episode with a quick little message, I I believe, <laughs> that's very important to share with you guys. So I end the show with a quick message. Next episode, I'm going to save um, some more details about my life for the next episode, and then I will also have another message for you guys so stick around to the end of this one and do come back for the next episode okay so (laughs) the name of the show is qc qc is short for queen cast okay so queen cast and how i came up with queen cast is by simply removing the word pod and replacing it with my nickname queen so my nickname is queen not a podcast, it's a queen cat. And the slogan of the show is talk is free. How I came up with that is by simply figuring out a way to incorporate my favorite word into my brand. So my favorite word is um, free. I love the word free. I believe that word described me. That is my personality. I'm a free agent. I'm warming this earth. I'm here to spread love and joy to everyone. And I do that in the utmost freedom. There must be freedom in my work, in my line of work, in anything that I do. I am an entrepreneur. So anything that I do, I have to be free to do it. So that's how I feel. And that's what you can expect from this show. Okay, we're going to get crazy. It's not your normal podcast. This is actually just my private talk show. Okay, (laughs) so get ready for the craziness. We're going to have interviews. We're going to play games. We're going to laugh. We're going to cry. We're going to dance. We're going to have so much fun on this show. So And because that is actually who, like I said, that is who I am. I'm a fun person, and that's why I got into podcasting. I believe that podcasting is a perfect combination of, like, my super big free-spirited personality. And also, I've been told, plenty of time, actually, I've been told that I have a TV personality. Now, I don't know if I agree with that too much. (laughs) I haven't done any acting, but I don't think I would be a good actress. And I also don't think I have enough ratchet for like reality TV, right? So (laughs) I don't know how, I don't know how the TV personality thing fit me, but I do agree that I have a huge personality. Um, And also when I was growing up, um, I was into journalism. I actually um, was part of the journalism program in high school. So I believe podcasting, video podcasting specifically, um, is the perfect niche for me because it's a combination of um, you can see my big, colorful, crazy personality and I get to live my dream, you know, as, as a journalist. So that was my idea and that's how I got into podcasting and that's how I came up with the name, the slogan, the idea for the show. All right, so that's that. I plan to walk you guys, take you guys down a little memory lane, you know, to tell you a little bit of my life story, how I got from point A to point B, where I came from, how I got here, because I want you guys to actually get to know me. These couple of first episodes of the show is just going to be me and you guys getting to know each other, because like I just told you, the show is pretty much a reflection of my big personality, so the show is me. So in order for you to understand and really grasp the show, you have to know me know me right so i'm gonna take the time to do that um on this episode and the the next couple of episodes coming up all right so i'm gonna go ahead and reintroduce myself okay (laughs) i mentioned earlier my name is queen joe joe is short for joetta 
My full name is Joetta. My government is Joetta. <laughs> Joetta is actually a combination of my parents' name, right? Joe is my father. Etta is my mother. And they combine their name. I'm Joetta. My nickname, Queen. I'm a daddy's girl. That's why I chose to go with Joe as the nickname, right? And also my nickname, Queen, was given to me by my father. So there's plenty of time growing up when my dad is like super proud of me, everything I've done, <laughs> every time I accomplish something, he'll be like, that's my queen. Like he said that with so much like joy and proud and I loved it, I loved hearing it every time he said it. So that is my favorite nickname, I've stuck with it. I wear my crown with a whole lot of pride, okay? Cause like I said, I'm a daddy's girl and that's daddy's nickname for me. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I got to make my daddy proud all the time. So I carry my crown with a whole lot of proud. All right. I'm 30 years old. I just turned 30. Not just. I turned 30 last um, August. Ooh, 30, y'all. Ah, I know. Whew, welcome me to the 30 club. <laughs> 30 is such a big age, y'all. But I'm so happy. Like, I'm so happy to make it to 30. Like, I remember growing up, like, I uh, think 30, 30 years I was like old people growing up, right? And I'm here and I just turned 30. I'm like, wait a minute. This is actually like the beginning of my life, I feel like almost, right? So I'm just so, so happy to be here, to have been roaming this gracious earth for 30 years. Like I know people I went to high school with who didn't even make it to 25, y'all. So listen, to God be the glory, I've been here for 30 years and counting, all right? Okay. <laughs> All right. So today I'm 30. We're going to take it back a little farther to day one. All right. Day one of my life. I was born in Liberia. Liberia is, um, Liberia is located on the west coast of Africa. It's a tiny little country, west coast of Africa. We're bouldering country with um, Sierra Leone, Guinea, Ghana, um, Nigeria is somewhere there, Ivory Coast is there too, you know, all those West African countries, Liberia is in the midst of that. <laughs> so um, I was born actually in 93. I was born in the middle of a civil war in my country. So the war started in 92 and I was born in 93. So the first couple of years of my life was just complete terror. Like the war lasted, after I was born, the war lasted for about four or five more years. So, just complete terror, like I said. I was a baby, though, so I don't really fully, like, remember that, the actual war, but I do remember, like, my mom, I do, like, I've lived through my mom telling stories of the struggle of being, being born in the midst of a war, like, her not having no food to eat, right? Um, so, therefore, I had no food to eat, because if your mom is not consuming any food, she, she ain't got no teddy milk, y'all, so... <laughs> Just, just imagine. I'm happy that I lived through that experience and I can laugh about it today and stuff like that now. But um, like I said, it's a terrible experience. My mom tell all these stories. The part of it that I can remember though is that the actual like the aftermath of the war, because like I said, when when I was born, I was nobody remember the couple of years when they were born, right? I think your memory start at like five, six years old. So I remember more so the aftermath of war, like the country just being completely destroyed, like building pieces everywhere, like people don't have lives anymore. So many orphans all over the, the country because their parents die in a war and now they don't know what to do. They don't know how to start life. And you know what I mean? So that part is the part that I actually experience and remember little glimps and glimps of and that for me was it was worse than the actual war <laughs> i mean because like people are just the people people are just terrified they're still terrified they're suffering from ptsd it's like yeah the war is over but is it really over though right so there's there was this ptsd i remember i did a little bit of schooling there so i remember my mom like preparing me for school and have to also prepare me for if the war is to start again, like, you know, how to get home and how to, so it was just nothing I wish on, um, on anybody really. So I lived the first huge have like the first quarter of my life I did in Liberia, going through the war, the aftermath of the war. And then when I was 13, I got the opportunity to come to the United States. So 
I came to get the, <laughs> got the news to come to the United States. I just told y'all the terrible experience of living through the war, the aftermath of the war. By the way, for people who have no idea of, like, wars and anything relating to that, just Google that. Just Google war war in Africa and the aftermath of the war in Africa, like, so you can get a sense of where I'm coming from, right? So I'm 13 years old. Um, I get the opportunity to come to the United States. Y'all, let me walk y'all through that. I am so happy to come to the United States, y'all. I was so happy because I got just told y'all I'm coming. From, this is I'm living in the aftermath of the war. There's nothing going on. Everybody's confused, trying to get their life back together. There's no hope. There's no dream. There's just terror and PTSD throughout the whole country. Like nobody know where to start. It was bad. So I, when I got the opportunity that I was coming to a new country and I'm getting a new head start in life. I was so happy, y'all. I was so happy. I had all these big dreams. I was like, I'm going to America, y'all. <laughs> I'm going to make some friends. I'm going to meet all these new people. I'm going to be a star. Like, you know, I just, I was just, I had this big personality since a child. So there was, I came to America, just, you know, I packed my bag, me and my mom, my brother, we came to America. I get to America, like I just told y'all, I'm so happy to be here. I'm 13 years old. I'm, I was actually in middle school. So I did a little bit of the schooling in Africa, and by the time I got here, I was in seventh grade. So, so I did um, seventh and eighth grade of middle school for all my Staten Island people watching. Shout out to Forty Nine. <laughs> I went, I went to Forty Nine right there in Stapleton. I did seventh and eighth grade in Forty Nine. Now let me let me let me just walk y'all through that, okay? I get to 49, y'all. I just told y'all I'm so happy to be here. It didn't glimpse on me at one point that this is a whole new country I've just entered. Mm -mm, y'all, I was just happy to be here. I was just happy to be in America. So I get to school. I am just loud mouth, big personality, crazy kid. I'm answering every question in class. I'm talking to all these kids. And then by the time you realize it, I'm getting bullied, y'all. OMG. <laughs> Let me tell y'all, I got bullied so bad, like so, so bad from the clothes I wore to the way I talk to the way I sound, the way I smell. Everything was a monkey. You look like a monkey. You smell like a monkey. You sound like a monkey, right? So I just like this big, crazy personality after like a couple of months of middle school, I just went back into my little shell, y'all. I was like... <laughs> I was like, oh my God, what is going on, y'all? I was so confused, actually. I was so confused because I truly didn't understand bullying. Like, I did not understand bullying. I didn't know what I did wrong. Like, I didn't. I don't think bullying is not something, like I just told you guys the life I came from. Like, bullying is the least that we are worrying about back home. We're trying to survive. We're looking for food and water, y'all. So we're not nobody is talking about bullying. Nobody is bullying anybody back where I come from. So when I get here and I get introduced to this, I'm like, what the heck is going on? What what did I do? I'm just <laughs> I'm just happy to be here, right? So I'll go through this just crazy, crazy experience. I remember at one point it was so bad, like the first year of middle school Every day, almost every day, I was in the garden counselor office, like, crying to this man. Like, I forgot my garden counselor name in middle school. But if you went to 20, if you went to 49 um, in 2007 or 8 and you was in the journalism program, you know um, our garden counselor. He did an awesome job, man. He was, he was trying to help me out. He, he did his thing. I'm going to give him credit because he was there for me. I went crying to that poor man every day, the whole First and second year, two years of uh, 49 that I did. I was in that office every day. And then um, the guy wanted to, um, he suggested that I got like a book, I guess, to be like my own therapy or whatever. I don't know. But he suggested that I got a book and I could write in this little book things like every time I felt I got bullied, how it made me feel, and this and that, y'all. So every time, I, the, this little book I had, I write in it every time I get bullied, but I always write in that book, I want to go back home. I want to go back home. But, you know, years later when I look at that book, I'm like, yo, that was such a bad experience, bro, because I'm telling y'all, I just came from a country of war. 
and after Mad of War. And I'm getting bullied so bad to the point that I'm thinking about going back to that country. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, I want to go back home. Like, take me back to the war. Like, what is going on? This looked like the second kind of war I'm going through here, right? Like, so freaking terrible. It was, like, one of the worst times of my life, actually. Like, no kid she had to go through that like it was so so bad and by the second year like that was the first year I got the book by the second year things seemed to be getting worse so I keep going back to the principal or the god and consular in 49 and I keep talking about how bad I'm getting bullied so by like my second year of 49 they um came up with another strategy another strategy they decided to assign a Caucasian girl and I made I make it a point to say a Caucasian girl because 99.9 of the bullying that was done to me when I came to this country was done to me by African American people. That was actually one of the most confusing thing in my life. Like it didn't make any sense. Like I didn't I was so confused. Like <laughs> the first whole year of the bullying, I was literally just confused. There wasn't it wasn't even even room to be sad because I literally didn't understand what was going on. And then why was it happening? with people that look like me. Like, it was so confused. I'm like, we supposed to be like the same, ain't we the same kind of people? What is going on, right? So now, the second year of middle school, my, um, I get this Caucasian girl to follow me around school, I guess, to help with, I don't know, to help with the bullying. I don't know. Like I said, the school try. They did, they did what they felt was necessary to help me, right? So this Caucasian girl now is walking around the um, building with me in 49, y'all, and I'm telling y'all, that did not help a thing. <laughs> like, that actually made it worse, y'all. They, pe them people, them kids was like, oh no, here come the African lady and her master, or her slave master, they come in. So, I'm like, what, right? So then actually, at that time, I became to start to understand like what the disconnection was, when, especially when the girl was assigned to me and all these remarks and little comments I start hearing, then I start to understand like, though these, though these people look like me, they are African American, they're not, they're actually like of their own culture. Like these, we're not the same kind of people. Yeah, they may have originated from Africa, right? But there's this whole thing of slavery and them um, Africans selling them to the, into slavery, and that's actually what the huge disconnection was that I wasn't even aware of. But then I started doing some digging. My time in this country, I, I discovered more and more, and, and it all started actually with that Caucasian girl that was being assigned to me because after I started hearing the comments, I started digging more into things and honestly with the help of God, because I was just a 13 year old kid. I didn't really, you know what I mean? So I started uh, understanding more and more like why these people are so mad at me. And then I started making sense of it. And then I started to empathize with these people, started to understand like, oh yeah, no, I'll be mad too. if I, You know what I mean? So then I, I made the decision to actually like in order for me to actually survive in this country, I have to become these people. I have to become African American. African is not good enough. Af being African doesn't work in America. So then I started diving deep into, you know, the cultural, the ethnicity, the things they like, the people, the music, the, the TV shows, you know, all that good stuff. So by the time, um, by the time I got to college, um, I've done so much adopting, like to this new country that um, when I speak and I tell people like, oh yeah, I'm at, they're like, where are you from? And I'm, I'm from Africa. I was actually born in Africa. They're like, really? Are you sure? Right? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I know that what I experienced. You know what I mean? So to say all of that though, I would like to say I'm very, very grateful um, of how far we've came as a country, America, how far we came as a people that kids, kids that are doing that transition now to this country who are transitioning from Africa to America they don't experience the same thing that I've went through like I've actually talked to kids nowadays completely different experience y'all so I'm just so grateful for that and I'm grateful that no kid have to go through that again thanks to like Marvel Studio Black Panther thanks to the Afrobeat movement we've done the you know the Vito Burnable West Kid thanks to, thanks to all those amazing artists people have gotten to see africa like a different 
point of view of Africa. So the kids are now transitioning to America. They don't have that bullying experience of Africans being monkeys, right? It's a whole different welcoming with open arms. We're like, oh, how do you eat fufu? How do you make a goose, right? (laughs) All these cool things. So I'm just, I'm over the moon. I'm overjoyed because like I said, not any experience any kid should ever go through ever in life so i'm happy that no kid and especially i'm happy that my kids don't gotta go through that y'all because i'm telling y'all i've done so much adopting that i would be knocking on somebody's school door like if anybody called my children monkey i'll be at the door like hello let me put some knowledge in you okay so I'm happy I don't got to do that. (laughs) I'm happy I don't got to be that mom at the door rescuing that kid, okay? Because, like I said, no kid should have to experience that, all right? So that is it for my transition story. I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through the motherhood side of my life because, like I said, I have two little babies. I love my babies. I love, love, love my kids, okay? I'm going to tell you about my amazing kids, but before I start... My journey into motherhood, I just want to give a huge shout out to my parents, okay? I don't, I can't even imagine motherhood without my mom and dad. Like, these people took grandparents to a whole new level, okay? Like, (laughs) they are hands on there with me, helping me raise my kids, and it's the most beautiful experience possible. Like, I can't not wish for anything more. So, I just want to, before I start talking about my kids, I just want to give a huge shout out to my parents. Huge shout out to my mom and dad. May God continue to bless these people, okay? Back to my two babies, all right? I love my kids, y'all. I have two little beautiful beanstalks. Motherhood, motherhood looks different for everyone, y'all, okay? I was first introduced to motherhood from um, my my niece, my brother's daughter. So I met my niece um, via the phone, actually, when she was being born, she was born in Africa, West West Africa, Liberia as well. So she was born. My brother called me over the phone like, hey, I'm, I'm your baby is being born. So <laughs> I got to meet her for the first time. I heard the first cry. I gave her her name. I got to name her and all these, you know, beautiful moments we could possibly have via the phone, right? And um, two years later, she got to join us here in America her and my brother and her mom stayed in Liberia because of immigration rights and paperwork or whatever. So I finally got to meet my niece, y'all. OMG. I met my niece at two years old. She was the first child into being introduced into my life. Before my niece, I have never even babysitted a child. Like I knew maybe cousins, nephews who had children, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. But a direct personal like interaction with a kid was when I first met my niece and like I just mentioned I just told y'all her mom stayed in Africa so when I met her it was just her and my dad so when she came here I just it was just this beautiful innocent like I've never seen so much innocent in physical form like I just I looked into her eyes and it's just this big innocent confused eyes <laughs> she's like don't wear her family we're excited to see her she actually didn't even know us you know she's meeting us for the first time so she's shy and it's just i'm just like oh my god this is my little baby <laughs> like from the moment i met my niece i fell in love with her and that was my baby couldn't nobody tell me nothing i wasn't hearing nothing from nobody that was my baby girl and i have been raising my niece for uh seven years now because she came out too and she's just turned nine years old she just turned nine actually last weekend i took her to the kalahari resort beautiful experience i'm just overjoyed i'm so happy to be a part of her life i'm so happy that i was blessed with being a part of her life i took her on the road as her mother i wouldn't trade that for anything in the whole world and then at one point she was like auntie i want a sibling right (laughs) she's like i want a sibling auntie i'm lonely right i need somebody to play with so i'm like all right girl you know i don't know about the men but we gonna see what we're gonna do (laughs) so i went ahead and god blessed me i believe god blessed me with my two-year-old son my son is now two um just the uh, the most beautiful thing to watch these two little babies grow up in front of me oh my god like y'all i could not be more 
happy to be part of their life journey. Like I couldn't, I actually couldn't even, I don't even know what my life was before I met my niece. I was like, where was I going? What direction was I headed in before I, before these kids came into my life, right? Like literally everything I do now is for them. It's because of them. I've lived my life. I've, I've experienced things. I still have more life to live, but I've done so much and I'm just like, I want to see what they're going to be, what they're going to do. You know, I'm so, since I met them, I'm so selfless because I'm just all about them. I love my babies. I love them. If they're going to know my daughter's going to watch this episode, <laughs> shout out to you, Sugar Pod. Thank you for introducing me to motherhood. I love my babies. And that's actually the message of this first episode, y'all. Go out there and have you some kids. That's my message to y'all. I'm going to tell y'all why. That's the message in a minute. But that's the message. Message of episode one, QC. Queen Joe wants y'all to go out there and have y'all some kids. Okay? Have you some kids. Or be a part of raising the next generation. Be a part of a kid life. Foster. There's plenty of kids that need to be fostered. There's plenty of kids that need to be adopted. So, My message to you guys is to go out there and be a part of raising the next generation. Like, seriously, that is the message. And I'm about to tell y'all why right now. So, me and you, human beings, we are just animals, right? We are part of the mammal spectrum of the animal kingdom. So, the common def the common definition the most common definition of a human being that I could find when I was doing my my research for this episode, the most common definition is a bipedal primate mammal. That's the simple definition of a human being, right? Bipedal is just a simple fancy word for um, animals who have access their two back legs, right? So the animals who have figured out how to stand up, because we all know animals walk on four legs. So the animals that have figured out how to stand up and walk on their two back legs are part of the, the bipedal animal spectrum. Primate is another fancy word for apes, chimpanzee, baboons, gorilla. So and mammals, like I mentioned, mammals, this is animals mammals is another kind of animals right so by that definition we are just apes that have figured out how to walk on our two back legs now this is no new knowledge i'm dropping on anybody i'm sure we've all seen the the timeline of evolution where the ape stands up and is walking and he goes into the homo sapien and all of that right so this is nothing new i'm just um reiterating so to say so from that simple definition, we are animals, mammals. Our core, hear me out, our one core foundation as human being on this planet is to reproduce. That is it. I'm sure you guys have seen plenty of animal, National Geographic animal shows. You see animals go to one location, breed, come back, mate go to the same location like that is their whole circle of life right now evolution has been so great to the human race like evolution has been so gracious to us right we're at a point where we're like we're trying to subtract reproduction from from our from the human race like we're at a point where we're like we don't even need to reproduce no more we need to build life Right. And I'm speaking of artificial intelligence. If anyone is confused, we are at the era in life where we are building life. We are building the next generation. So that is why that's my message to you. My message to you guys is to go out there and reproduce because the next generation of kids are going to be needed to save the human race. Because we are at, in a time where now we are building life. We're not, we're not producing life anymore. And we do this with, you know, it's so simple, actually. It's not really even, like, it's very simple. We save, we have, like, spe- animal species that we're saving. We have to save this, ra- this um, race of species because they're going extinct. So we, we set a male and a female so they could have more kids. And so we do this with animals. So we are at a point where we need to start doing, we need to figure out that our own race is already at stake. Now, I sound crazy, but hear me out. Hear me out. That's a documentary on Netflix. Documentary is called Our Planet. Beautiful documentary is narrated by Morgan Freeman. So we all know it's, gonna, it's great, right? <laughs> so watch this documentary, y'all. Go on Netflix and watch this documentary. It will give you a 
I, if I'm not making any sense, I sound like this crazy girl, that documentary will help me help make sense what I'm trying to tell y'all. The documentary gives you, it does a whole timeline throughout evolution. Like you see from when there was nobody to when the first life form was formed in Africa to the dinosaurs and how they got out of here and what came next and next and the next and the next. And it actually gives you, it gives you a, a glimpse of, um, what's going to happen next right so it talks about ai as well so to help me make it make sense watch that documentary i'm sure it will make everything make sense what i'm trying to say and i have another example nate cannon <laughs> nate cannon y'all my next example is nate cannon i know we always talk about nate cannon is not funny like okay he's not funny but he doing his thing. He is doing his job as a human being on the reproduction aspect of things. Like, I don't know how he's dealing with the baby mama thing. Like, we're not going to talk about that. But but he's doing great as a human being. He is repro This man, don't he don't reproduce the whole next generation already. Like, I'm like, go on, my brother. Like, that is what we're supposed to be doing. And honestly, if you think about it, you're like, that's a lot of baby mama. But this man got like 13, 12, 15, 20 kids. That's a lot of kids for one woman to have. You know what I mean? So if you need a couple of them to spread the team, that makes sense, you know, so I'm just with him, I'm happy he's able to hold it down from what it looked like, because, you know, don't nobody know him personally, so from what has been presented to us via the media, he looks like he's also doing a great job as at raising all those kids, which is equally as, import, as important as having the kids, you have to dedicate your life to these kids that you're having, right, so from my standpoint from my point of view nick cannon is doing a beautiful job and i just want to use him as an example and i also want to acknowledge him as far as fatherhood go because you know we're also only screaming about the deadbeat dad so i just want to say shout out to nick cannon and as far as um evolution and reproduction goes he's doing his thing he's a perfect example of what i'm trying to tell you guys to do and he he gets the message i think i have actually seen an interview of him um, saying that he he's doing his job as a man on this planet he's reproducing so that is that's my message if, <laughs> if i'm not making sense look up the nikana interview check out nikana live check out the documentary on netflix but that is my message to you guys go out there and have you some kids y'all be a part of the next generation if you don't if you have not even thought about having some kids figure out another way you can be a part of raising the next generation that's the core message if you don't want to have kids that's cool but mentor some kids um adopt a kid foster the kid you know be a godparent to a kid but every one of us now should start put it into our brain that we need to be a part of raising the next generation because we're going to need that generation to save the human race and that's my message to you guys because the robots are coming, y'all. Okay? <laughs> I got to laugh. <laughs> I got to laugh every time I say that, y'all, because I know I sound like Chicken Little. <laughs> the robots are coming. The robots are coming. But I'm being so serious, y'all. I'm being so serious. The robots are literally coming. They're actually here now. You know, that's AI. AI is here and it's taking over, y'all. It's taking over. And that's why I'm trying to let y'all know the key to this is to start being to start impacting our kids life to start being a part of a child life because they're going to be this generation of kids this is our future like our robot is now our robot is happening now like the government officials ai is like a, a wildfire that's spreading out through the whole country through the whole world and government officials don't even know how to put a stop to this they don't even know how to govern this right now like they're they're writing rules to govern AI right now as we speak. So the future is now. The future is happening now. Like our robot, our robot came out in like 2006, 2007. I remember because that's the same year I came to America. So <laughs> I remember that. When our robot came out, that we was like, oh, that ain't going to happen. It's happening now, y'all. Our robot is now. Will Smith, our robot is happening now. And if y'all think I'm, I'm crazy, if y'all think I sound like Chicken Little, let me tell y'all. Tesla... Tesla, y'all know Tesla, the fancy electric car, the potato, the white potato man, Elon Musk, Tesla, they're, they're releasing their first robot, 2025, 
The first Tesla robot is being released in 2025. 2025 is next year, y'all. Our robot starts next year. The, the Tesla robot, <laughs> like, the, it's so crazy, but it sounds crazy. It sounds silly, absurd, but it's true. Like, it's happening right now. Tesla, the Tesla robot is the same price as the car. It's like thirty, twenty-five, thirty, forty thousand dollars for a Tesla robot. You can't tell me the so the same people who are able to afford a Tesla car are going to be able to afford the Tesla robot. Pretty soon, pr by the end of next year, y'all. By the end of next year, twenty twenty-five, we're probably going to be breaching our kids on like how to walk to school, how to encounter robots on the street when they walk to school. Like that's how futuristic the times we're living in are. Like it's so like a robot is probably going to attack a kid before there's going to be laws written to govern that to not happen right because we, there's nothing we can do to even stop what's happening now because like i said we're we're living it's happening it hasn't gotten to the point yet where it could be stopped right this is the beginning we're still trying to figure out how to govern this thing so my message to y'all is in the people that are going to stop this thing right the people that are going to stop ai from taking over the human race are going to be our kids so that's why my message of this episode is to go out there and have you some kids go out there and be a part of raising the next generation if that means being a godparent to a kid do it if that means fostering a kid adopting a kid figure it out do whatever you got to do taking a, a relative who's having trouble raising their kid help out be a part of raising the next generation that is my message to you guys, and that is the end of my show, guys. <laughs> That's the end of the show. That's the end of this episode. I hope you guys enjoy my life story, the little trip down memory lane. I hope you guys receive my message well. You know, I hope I probably sound crazy giving you that message, right? But remember, Chicky Little, he was right at the end of the movie. <laughs> at the end of Chicky Little, he was right. So hear me out, and you know what I mean? If you didn't receive the message well, though, also, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. If I sound like a crazy woman on the mountain, I don't know what I'm talking about, that's perfectly fine. You're doing just fine. This message is for the people who have thought about having kids at one point or who have been in, uh, in the situation to be a part of a child's life and they have denounced that. This message is for you. I'm here to encourage you to go out there and do that be a part of raising the next generation okay and do me a favor guys share this video for me share it with your friends share it with your family share it with anyone anyone you know who has kids you know let them know that queen joe wants them to be a part of the revolution y'all that's right it's still a revolution going on it's a revolution it's still about race but it's no longer about black and white it's about the human race okay so that's my message to you guys i love you guys thank you guys for watching me Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Queen Cast. I see you guys in the next episode of QC. Bye bye.